and that this is part of the RAM groups is all the bloggers jump in and all of a sudden going to the Mercado is a tourist attraction. <laughs> you know, the Mercado was a place where poor folks went to get their food because they can't afford to buy it anywhere else. But now it's a tourist attraction and the prices <laughs> balloon higher than the at regular stores because it's a tourist attraction. You know, it's a fun thing to go do. You know, for rich travelers, you know, I mean, rich compared to the locals. Hello and welcome to our Retire Early Lifestyle. Today we're going to talk about some of the outlandish and silly things that happen in some of these countries abroad while doing something as simple as grocery shopping. We all need to eat, don't we? They say that since 2020, grocery prices have gone up 20% in the U.S., but we all know that figure is more like 40 to 50%. And grocery shopping abroad is seeing its fair share of inflation too, and so there is no escaping it. Let's jump right into the information you're waiting for. Let's start with Mexico. We spent time in both northern Baja, Mexico and down south in Puerto Vallarta. Three years living in Mexico in total, and we shopped the grocery stores and the well-known food outlets called Mercados. These spots are where the poorer locals and budget-minded people shop for food and other items. In Baja, the grocery stores are nice and big and look just like a grocery store in the USA, right? Yes and no. Appearances can be deceiving. In Baja, some prices are over the top and cost more than in the USA, but not everything. It really depends on where you shop and how you shop. If you shop at Walmart in Baja, produce prices are the same as the USA. We stayed out of Walmart except to buy our unscented toilet paper. It's the only store in town that had toilet paper without perfume. This is serious folks, believe me, you don't want to use cancer causing toilet paper. By the way, Walmart in Mexico is substandard compared to the Walmart in the USA. They lack many products that you would normally find in the USA's Walmart, and the variety is lackluster. In Baja, we shopped at a couple of big box stores and we hit the Mercado a couple times a week. Luckily for us, we found a Mercado that had no gringo shopping there, so the prices were stable and locally priced. That's your first clue. No gringos, normal prices. If there are gringos shopping there, gringo prices. In Mexico, the discrimination was so bad we couldn't get any of the vendors to sell us clean well water for any less than 400% markup. It was really bad. I had one guy ask me $90 for a used fishing rod that I can buy here in the U.S. for $25. One propane guy lied to me and said they were out of propane and would no longer deliver until he saw me at a different rental where the landlord ordered the propane. Then he was embarrassed. He was caught in a lie. Caught <laughs> Okay, so let's move on to Puerto Vallarta. You're going to get an earful now, are you ready? We were so disappointed with the grocery stores and mercados in Puerto Vallarta and we even made a video about it. The only grocery store in the city center where we were staying didn't have any food, and I mean that literally. Some days there was no milk. Most days they were out of extra virgin olive oil. It may seem like we're complaining, but no, we're letting you know this was in a supposedly high-end resort area and the grocery store was a big disappointment. Did the Crocs eat all the food? <laughs> but putting joking aside, perhaps people eat out in restaurants when they visit Puerto Vallarta. But we cook and we cook a lot. We learned very quickly it's better to eat your meals in when traveling. And we prefer eating our own meals at home anyway. So we're just saying that we went without foods that we normally use all the time when we were in Puerto Vallarta. Look at this. This is the produce section. Surprises were quite entertaining, we got to tell you. I don't know what the store was trying to do, but they were putting sugary cereals in see-through plastic bags in the produce bins. You know, where you would find lettuce or tomatoes. You know, the healthy food. 
It was the strangest thing we had ever seen before. And the variety of fruits and veggies was minimal. And when I say minimal, I mean it. There was only one kind of potato, the small white potatoes. And well, if that's your favorite potato, then maybe you wouldn't notice. They didn't have fresh ginger, something you'll want if you live in Mexico. They only had a few types of peppers, only had Roma tomatoes. They didn't have any tropical fruits except for papayas and pineapples, and they were very expensive. Half the time, the papayas didn't have any seeds, and the seeds are what we use when we live in developing countries. Yes, parasites are endemic in Latin America, and you'll want the papaya seeds. So yes, the whole ordeal in Puerto Vallarta was very strange when it came to shopping for food. And the Mercados? The Mercados were totally overrated and overpriced and ironically more expensive in most instances than the grocery stores. We're just letting our viewers know that food shopping in Puerto Vallarta was a total nightmare and probably still is. Let's move on to Ecuador. As you know, we spent eight years in Ecuador. And we have a lot of experiences to relay to you today. Food can be much cheaper in Ecuador if you stay away from the imported stuff. The imports are outrageously expensive. So if you want to keep your grocery bills down, it means not buying the foods you know and love like Kiko Men soy sauce, Skippy peanut butter, and ranch dressing, just to name a few imports. If you're on a budget, you can also try your hand at the local Mercado, but it's not recommended unless you speak Spanish and negotiate. Otherwise, just stick to the big box grocery stores. When we lived in Cuenca during the bubble of 2012-2017, the gringos started making the poor folks Mercado a tourist attraction. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, you heard that right, a tourist attraction. And that, this is part of the RAM groups, is all the bloggers jump in, and all of a sudden, going to the Mercado is a tourist attraction. <laughs> you know, the Mercado was a place where poor folks went to get their food because they can't afford to buy it anywhere else. But now it's a tourist attraction, and the prices <laughs> balloon higher than the at regular stores because it's a tourist attraction. You know, it's a fun thing to go do. You know, for rich travelers, you know, I mean, rich compared to the locals. In Cuenca, the gringos would give group tours for the expats at the Feria Libra Mercado in Cuenca. These expat groups were for those who didn't know Spanish and couldn't negotiate prices, which was about 99% of the expats. And so they hired a tour guide to help them shop for food. <laughs> Now, you can imagine what happened with the prices and the petty crime in that Mercado, right? They both exploded. It was a total nightmare. The whole ordeal of shopping on a budget was gone for the expats that actually knew Spanish and could get the locally priced deals. Shopping at the Mercado, which is geared for poor folks and residents on a budget, turned into a circus. You're now paying top dollar for food at a mercado that smells like rotten meat and fish with drunk men lying passed out in the produce aisles in their own vomit. And to top it off, you're risking getting something stolen, whatever you're carrying around with you. Personal experience. A lady vendor sold me some fresh beans at the local rate. But when her husband heard of it, he scolded her and had her chase me down a few hundred yards and she asked me for more money. <laughs> I just told her to take her beans back and give me my money back. But she made a face like her husband was going to beat her or something. After a few more tries, I just decided that in the interest of keeping the peace, I would acquiesce and give her the extra coin. But I would never shop with them again and I don't think her husband cared. As to the Mercado, we eventually just quit shopping there. The whole thing was getting really out of hand. Oh, here's the jumbo ones. They're eleven fifty, which is less than six dollars a pound. It's actually five dollars a pound. 
always told people, go to the store before you go to any Mercado and check the prices, you know? I've said that for almost eight years. So how much is that price per pound? That's eleven fifty six. Five dollars. Five dollars, that's a yeah. good price for sure. So yeah, why would you go to a outdoor mercado that some people say smells like vomit when you could just come over here and get it for less? <laughs> no kidding, that's a great price. <laughs> Now understand, this happens in all of the Rams top 10 list countries where the prices are not listed on the produce. If you live abroad now in an expat country, please comment about the Mercado shopping. We'd love to hear about it. So what happened next at the Mercado? Besides outrageous prices was petty crime. Expats were getting their purses, wallets, cell phones, backpacks, cameras, whatever they had on them at the time, they would get them stolen. But uh, I just well, want people to know there's more to what you're being told. Well, the Mercados are not in nice neighborhoods, or rather it could be the other way around, that the Mercado draws not the nicest, you know, some of the, the troublemakers. So, well, I think the bottom line is Mercados are not areas for everyone. And I could even say they're not areas for most uh, foreigners. It would take a very different, diligent type of person to uh, behave in a Mercado the way they should. And this includes not bringing wallets and purses. And you know, you hear it from time to time on a forum, I got my purse stolen at, fair, at the Mercado. Well, why were you bringing it to begin with that this shows that you, you're, well, for one, you're not reading our material because we tell people not to do that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the thieves worked in groups, but it was still going on when we left in 2020. It's how the thieves make a living. Smartphone thievery in Ecuador is big business. One lady wasn't even inside the Mercado, but outside on the sidewalk talking on her cell phone when a thief just walked by and snatched her phone. She was so troubled by that, it made headlines and lots of noise on the forums because she was using her phone so close to the Mercado where it's known for thievery. But what do you expect when you're giving out group gringo tours of the poor folks store? But anyway, we ended up publishing several articles about the Mercado turning into a circus and eventually they just quit giving the tours because it, it, it was ridiculous. Mercados are not for everyone. Most expats are better off sticking to the grocery stores and here's why. But there's way more to, to know about Mercados. Mercados in these foreign countries are for poor people. It's where the poor people uh, shop when I was uh, a boy in Italy. Um, we were poor southern Italians, let's face it, we shopped at Mercado's, um, you know, so I know what that's like, I was raised with that, and, uh, you know, I go there, I, I'm on a budget, the people that are on a budget are a little bit, have a different, you, know, you have to have a different attitude, uh, you know, people that are used to shopping at, say, like, expensive stores like Nordstrom's, it's like you take somebody like that and for them to go to a flea market and say, oh gee, the prices are, are cheaper than Nordstrom's, but yet the flea market seller is tripling the price to you because he sees you're wearing uh, Saks Fifth Avenue uh, clothing or, or Nordstrom clothing, but, clothing, but, you, but you're just comparing it to Nordstrom or Saks, even though he's char charging a triple. That makes no sense. That's not reality. It may be the reality for some people, but it changes the landscape and you're setting yourself up for robbery, theft, salt. Uh, it's not for everyone. Mercados are not for everyone. It takes a certain kind of diligence to want to bargain and, 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 and back and forth over 20, 30 cents, a dollar, two dollars for everything you buy and to reject pricing, you know, oh, how much is that? It's supposed to be a dollar. They tell you three. No thanks. You know, so it takes a different kind of person. If you, you know, mo most foreigners we meet always tell us they don't negotiate, so Mercados are not for them. This next one will be an eye-opener for some of you. We went to the Panama City, Panama Mercado, and we barely got through the entrance when one of the vendors told me with a seriousness to put my camera away. He pointed his finger at me and waved his finger, making the no-no sign. 
Consequently, we walked down a few aisles and didn't like the heavy staring vibe we got. And well, we laughed and we never shopped at the Mercado in Panama City, Panama again. It is definitely not for most expats. There weren't any foreigners in there and it on the outskirts of town like they really don't want for foreigners in there upping the prices or something here are some prices from one of the main grocery stores in Panama and these prices are from nine years ago but they're probably even higher now well of course they are it's been nine years I'll tell you it's a real price nightmare to shop in the grocery stores in Panama Unfortunately, the grocery stores in Panama are way overrated and overpriced and your grocery bill will be just as much as in the U.S. if you live in Panama City, Panama. There were many experiences that were very pleasant too, but we wanted to share the other side of the story today just to give the balanced view. How do we not participate in this picture? How do we do it? Well, it, you know, it takes a little effort. You know, the, the biggest thing that I see is people all over the internet that think, oh gee, all we've got to do is pack a bag, go over here, and life's going to be so different and so wonderful. And I'm not saying that that wouldn't be the case, but it isn't separate or apart from this other picture that we're discussing. It's part of the picture. I think it's important for people to know um, the straight skinny on everything and to pretend and stick your head in the sand you know, and pretend that uh, you're going to some idyllic uh, place that uh, no, no problems exist and everything's perfect. It's just not real. You know, it, it's just incumbent upon each individual person to first become educated. You know, become educated, that's, that's the purpose of our ch channel, is to educate and inform. In order to make a difference, we need to avoid these places. And that's why we left that ram-centered area and decided that's not the way to do it. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed that video and we hope you have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.